Hey guys! Today I'm going to show you how I do the ribbon trim tutu, how I do the um, double layers so I use less ribbon on my ribbon trim tutus. I had a couple of people ask and I think I showed it once in a video but it was just like a daily vlog that I did. And if you don't know, I do daily vlogs where I vlog my, my life every day. And so if you are interested in seeing that, you can go ahead and subscribe and yeah. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I do this since no one's home right now. And hopefully I won't get interrupted. Um, I unfortunately already cut my tool, so I can't show you how I cut my tool. But I will leave a link down below where I did another video where I showed how to make a ribbon trim tutu and I show you how to cut your tool. You have to use the tool off the bolt and in that video I think I used eight yards of tool and the tool comes in a layer so when you cut when you have eight yards and you are going to cut let's say if you cut 12 inches there's going to be two pieces of tool that will be identical there will be both both will be 12 inches um, in width and the eight yards long. So instead of separating my two pieces like I did in that video, um, in the video I separated them and I put ribbon on one piece and then I just linked the other one together. So in the end I would have 16 yards of tulle and it would be 12 inches in length or in width. So instead of doing that, I'm going to keep both pieces together and I've actually modified this a little because before when I first started doing it I was just using the eight yards like I would in a regular tutu a 12 month tutu I would use um, eight yards but now I'm using 10 yards so I'm using 10 yards and I have I am using both layers together I keep them together that way I have the coverage, <clears throat> excuse me, that way I have the coverage of the tool because tool is very see-through and that way you have, have the thickness of having two pieces of tool. So the first thing you're going to want to do, you need a sewing machine. Now I had people ask if they could use a glue gun, if they, I've never used a glue gun and from what I heard it doesn't turn out too well. So um, a sewing machine is probably best. And if you don't have a sewing machine, you can check Craigslist, you can check. Walmart used to have one for, I think it was like $69. Maybe it was $89. I don't know, but my first sewing machine came from Walmart, and it was fairly cheap. This one is a brother. I bought this quite a few years ago, and it's done good so far. I've never had any problems out of it. But anyway... So you're going to need a bobbin and thread color, the same color as the ribbon you are going to use. I'm using black. I'm going to be making a Minnie Mouse with pink polka dots and black. So, and I am using one and a half inch um, double face satin ribbon. I, I use satin face ribbon for every... <laughs> for most of my ribbon trim tutus so you're going to need that and um, what I do is first thing you want to make sure because I'm pretty sure your tutu your tool is going to be at some point in time on the ground mine is laying down here next to me and you want to make sure that you are um, like vacuum if you have carpet or sweep or something because tool tends to pick up everything. I mean pe little pieces. I sew down here so I always have little pieces of thread everywhere and I just have been picking little pieces of thread off this thing. Like there's one now. Oh it jumped from the static. You can also spray these with static guard. It kind of helps reduce some of the stuff it picks up but that's just a little tidbit for you. So the first thing you're going to do, you keep both of your pieces together. So I've got two tool pieces here. And I'm just keeping them together. That's the way I cut them. And then my ribbon. 
first thing I'm going to do, the ribbon goes first, and if you are using a printed ribbon, make sure your pretty side is down, because that is going to be the top. So if you got polka dotted, you want to make sure the polka dots or the pretty side is down. But if you're using double face satin like this, you don't have to worry about it because both sides are pretty. So you're going to want to make sure you have your ribbon down first and then your tool. And I always do it so my tool is about maybe three-fourths of the way on the ribbon. I want... I don't want it over because that's going to be the side that's showing and I don't want my tool showing on the other side of my ribbon so and you make sure you have both of your pieces of tool together try to even them up as much as possible and then I always back stitch and you're gonna sew this piece of ribbon <clears throat> all the way down the side of your two pieces of tool so it should be, my piece, my piece should be about 10 yards long, so I want to make sure that I have 10 yards of ribbon, and it's on the roll. And begin. When you get to the end, you want to make sure you back stitch. your edges so now that I got one side put on I'm going to put this all back down here and I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to be using pink polka dot. This is for a pink mini. I'm going to change out my thread. I need pink thread now. For both top and so bottom. So you're going to want to heat seal again. And people have asked what kind of ribbon this is. This is grow grain ribbon. Sorry, my phone's... I have it on vibrate. <laughs> um, this is um, grow grain ribbon. And it's polka dot. And you're going to want to now my it was like this when I was sewing it on and now I want to make sure that the pretty side is facing up okay you're gonna want to make sure the pretty side is facing up and then the side is facing down got that so that way when you go to sew your channel, because I'm sewing my ribbons on first before I sew my sh channel, that way this will fold over and the pretty side will be shown right here and the pretty side will be shown right there. So, so again, you're going to want to make sure you have both of your sides, both of your two pieces of tool lined up, and you have your pretty side down, heat sealed. You're going to do the exact same thing that you just did with the black one and you're gonna back stitch and then you're gonna go ahead and sew it all on there so you need to have make sure you have at least 10 yards if that's how much tool you're using of ribbon
Okay, when you get to the end of your tool, again, you're going to want to backstitch when you get heat seal and now go ahead and get to the end again now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure you have the same color tool as your same color thread as your tool to sew the channel in which your elastic will go through. So what I do is I usually stagger my edges just a little bit just so that black will be popping out and the, two, the elastic I'm using is 3 fourths of an inch so I want to make sure I have at least an inch to an inch and a half for my channel because the thinner you do it the harder it is going to be to get your elastic through the channel so I'm doing it right there so yeah there's plenty of room it's probably about one and a half inches and you're going to start and you're going to back stitch You get to the end you're gonna to want to make sure you backstitch which I already did so now these do take quite a bit of time to sew as you probably saw it takes me roughly about I don't know 45 minutes to an hour to make one depending on the size so now what I'm going to do is gonna get my elastic. First, I'm gonna cut this off. If I can, come on, scissors work. And, and let me see if this is the one I had measured out already. Yeah. Okay, I make my um. My 12 to 18 month tutus, I make them, hold on, I see a thread on here, I'm going to cut, um, I make them 18 inches of unstretched elastic, so this is 18 inches unstretched, okay, and here I already have one already done so you're going to use 18 inches of unstretched elastic and what I do is I get these big safety pins and I put one on the end 
and then I use one on this end. I only put this one on the end just to keep my tool from coming off. So then, now this is where if you're not used to it, you're going to get some cramps in your fingers. <laughs> um, but you just go ahead and feed your tool onto your elastic through the little channel you just sewn. Okay, so I went ahead and I changed my bobbin back to white and my thread is white. You can see it's white. Just because this waistband is white and I'm not going to put a bow on this one. Now if I was, let's say, going to add a bow, um, I guess it really wouldn't matter what color I use because I would be covering that part up with the bow. Um, I'll just show you real quickly. And I overlap my um, two edges. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. Hello, camera. Okay. So what I do is I overlap my two edges. I overlap them maybe an inch. Maybe a little less. Yeah, we'll leave it at an inch. And what I do, we'll go this way, is once I get them overlapped about an inch, I will get it underneath my foot here and down and I am going to zigzag stitch this so it is set just on the standard zigzag stitch and I will sew it once I get to the end I don't know if you can see that once I get to the end I'm going to back stitch all the way back across to the end That. So that way that is secure and not going north. Now I'm going to flip it around and this part that's sticking up right here, I'm going to go ahead and zigzag stitch that down. So then it'll have two strips of stitches that will hopefully hold this down and it won't come undone. So I, just, I just did the same thing. I went down it and then I back stitched back up. So this is what it's going to look like. So of course it don't want to, there you go. So I was going to say I don't want to focus on the strap. So that is safe and secure and I know it's not going to go nowhere. Go ahead and trim a few of these threads off here. Okay. Now let's back this guy up. Now if I was going to put a bow on this, I would take this right here and I would make sure that my bow covers up this part. Um, how I do that is I will move, because you're going to have this split right here, but I want to make sure that would be in the back and not in the front. And I would just slide my tool all the way around it until my um, split would be in the back. It would be right across from the where I would be putting the bow. That would be right about right, so I'll go ahead and even up my tool all the way around here. So I'd make sure that all my tool is nice and kind of evened around so you can't see 
right there. It looks a little sparse. So I'm going to move some of this over that way. There you go. That looks pretty good. So now back here is where the split would be. And you really don't notice once the child is wearing it that there's a split right there because it's all covered up. And up here is where it was sewn together. But if I was putting a bow, I'd put it there. That way you wouldn't be able to see that part of the waistband. And then that way I know that the split would always be worn in the back. But anyway, this is how I do my tutus when I use... half the ribbon. Well, I used about 10 yards of ribbon. 10 yards of pink ribbon and I used 10 yards of black ribbon. So that's that. I hope you guys like this video. Um, I do daily vlogs where I vlog my life every day and I show, you know, what orders I'm working on, what I'm doing, if I have any new ideas. I try to share them in my daily vlogs as well. Um, I just basically share my daily life, what I do every day, and a lot of times it's not that glamorous. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button. I will be doing a giveaway pretty soon, and it will be a crafty giveaway. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Bye.